Today, we have John Adesi. He's the business advisor with the Small Business Development Center with Johnson County Community College. They are great supporters and participants with the NEJC Chamber. And we're very fortunate to have such a renowned expert joining us today. Uh -oh. And you know, one of the other things I'm gonna say, John, is we were talking just a little bit earlier and you are all of those things, the great business advisor, but you're a great friend. We oh, truly wow. love having you come and present to us and help educate all of us. So with that, let's jump in and hear what you have to teach us today. Oh my, all right, well, thank you. That was the loveliest introduction I've ever had. So <laughs> thank you for doing that. Let me share my screen here. Come on, you can do it. And it's gonna be you for a second, Deb. Okay. All right, so you're looking at that lovely road to recovery? Somebody tell me. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Very good. That's great. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Ashley. All right, so we're going to be looking at the road to recovery. And uh, now remember, since we are on the state line, not everyone has the, uh, the very same roads. So it would be remiss of me if I didn't at least bust up our, our colleagues across the state line there. Uh, but I'm not uh, picking on them. I'm sharing this only as an example of really great content. Uh, this is a, um, a collision center and putting this out there. So I'm not goofing on Missouri. Okay. Just uh, sharing content. And I've got to share this as well. Uh, we are uh, funded, let's be blunt, uh, with a, a bunch of different stakeholders. Uh, we're under the um, network of America's SBDC with uh, about 1,500 advisors across the country. Really, the SBDC is the country's largest professional advising network, uh, completely unknown <laughs> to anybody. Um, we're under the SBA, and we are their consulting arm. I am an employee of Johnson County Community College, which is a fabulous, I'm not saying this only because Tim's here. I say this even if he was not. Um, but Johnson County Community College is a tremendous employer and a tremendous supporter and we've been uh, we've been here for decades and and it is um, part of, half of their mission statement is giving back to the community and this is one of the ways and we're honored to to be doing that and then the state even when the state was broke and by golly they were um back in the day there they still put money in because they get back uh, last year they got back 45 dollars for every dollar they put in and you can imagine why okay because when when we're working with 3500 small businesses out there the sales tax alone that you all generate is off the charts you know i mean i've got 1600 clients for crying out loud the 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 impact of the sales tax alone generated by those clients never mind the fact that they make income they pay income taxes they hire people they pay payroll taxes their employees pay income taxes their employees spend money at another store or another business and then it happens all over again we don't even factor that in it's just sales tax alone 45 to 1. so um so the state even though they don't have to continues to uh to fund us and you guys are a cherished uh partner who i love working with you all i've known deb for years uh so uh we're i'm, I'm thrilled to be here with you um let's talk a, a little bit about covid um, we've seen a swing, of course, with uh, profitability. Not every business was profitable before, um, but, uh, uh, but we're certainly seeing a swing uh, so that uh, fewer of them are profitable. Many of them did great strides in changing and making sure that people were safe and providing PPE for themselves and keep their customers safe, teleworking, changing things up, revising their, their policies and procedures and stuff. Um, they're optimistic as small businesses are. I mean, you have to be a, <laughs> you have to be optimistic to be a small business owner. And by the way, anything that you see here that has a, um, a link, I am sending Deb and Kelsey, uh, and Stoney a ginormous follow-up email that's got all these links. So you don't have to worry about writing any of these things down. It's, it, I think there's like 20 different links on that follow-up. So you'll get everything that you see, but anyway, businesses are optimistic that things are going to get better. Um, they are also realistic in that it's going to take time. You know, they're looking at maybe a, um, a six month window moving forward. And that was just, uh, just a couple of months ago in December with the Census Bureau doing a, uh, a study of that. Some businesses are kicking butt. I mean, we've got, oh my gosh, we've got home remodelers. We've got electricians that are uh, months, months, months backlogged out 
uh, because people are working from home. And it's like, well, this place stinks, man. I mean, we need an outlet. We need structured wiring. We need a, a better router. I mean, uh, those people are kicking butt. Uh, but some other businesses, particularly with regard to hospitality, for example, I've got event venues, uh, probably six as clients, and, and obviously they're suffering and waiting for uh, 2021 to really kick in and have some makeup weddings and such. Um, I have to say with, with very few, I'm going to be very blunt with you, with very few exceptions. I don't think there are any silver bullets within here. Um, there's a couple that I'm hoping um, either the people that are directly on this call or or the people that might access this later with YouTube or whatever can can make use of. And there's one that I was talking with Deb about, um, horrible, boring sounding name, the ERTC, Employee Retention Tax Credit. My God, you couldn't come up with a more boring name, but um, it's been a lifesaver to a couple of clients. So I want to make sure you understand about that because for one of my clients, it's a $1.4 million injection. They have a hundred and a quarter employees. For another one who's an aviation company, it's over half a million. And you can imagine what an aviation company is going through right now. So it's a, it's a big deal. Um, so I want to make sure we're all on the same page and then we're going to dive into money, marketing, uh, management and people and try to give you some tools to use uh, going forward on that road to recovery. But again, just first things first, let's, let's bring everybody kind of up to speed, make sure we're all on the same page. So the Economic Aid Act uh, signed on the 27th of December added that second draw of the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, and that's designed to keep people employed. Uh, and we've got a, a slide of each of these, of course. They, uh, they modified the granddaddy there, the IDLE, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. And we've got some good news with regard to that with the latest bill. Um, they extended the first draw. So if you did not do a Paycheck Protection Program loan last year, you still can. But by God, you better hurry. Um, because the official deadline is in three weeks, the 31st. And the unofficial deadline is probably about a week and a half or so out because banks are not going to want you to arrive on the 30th or the 31st with a, an application for this thing. They're going to they're gonna cut uh, the uh, application window short by a week or two to make sure that they can process those things. Um, we're still kind of waiting for the final word on these uh, shuttered venue grants for uh, theaters and concert things. And we definitely want to talk about the uh, ERTC. So the PPP, the, uh, particularly the second draw of the Paycheck Protection Program, you're looking at, it's a loan, all right? You go to your bank for a loan, um, and that loan is equal to two and a half months of your payroll or income, depends on whether you're a sole proprietor. If you are in some hospita hospitality businesses like a uh, restaurant, for example, it can be three and a half months of payroll, but you borrow it, and then you spend it on payroll, at least 60% on payroll, and the rest can be spent on business rent, business mortgage, utilities, uh, PPE supplies, uh, some other costs, and then they'll forgive it. Okay. Now we understand the frustration. Only about a third of first draw PPP loans have been forgiven. They were working on it. Okay. Um, I mean, it was like a they're deferred for many, many months. Um, for for the most part, people aren't making any payments on these things. Um, they've simplified the form. So as long as your loan is under 150 grand, it's a one-page form. Now. It's a one-page form from the SBA. So it's a one-page form with five pages of instructions. All right. I understand that. But, oh, my gosh. Uh, I've seen the form. I've used the form with clients. It's about a dozen questions. The hardest one on there is what was your loan number. So you're going to have to, you know, go through your email, your correspondence, and come up with a loan number. The rest of it is like, what's your name? Uh, you know, what? Um, how many employees did you have when you apply? How many do you have now? It's a one-page form form uh, for that for under 150 grand. And that translates to about $720,000 in annual payroll. So a lot of uh, a lot of small businesses are going to be able to use that one page, um, one page forgiveness form. So if you participated in the first round, and you've used the money up, and you probably did, let's face it, I mean, you probably got the loan back in August or July. Um, if you're going to use it up or you have, and you have fewer than 300 employees, and you're still having some quarters that were down, um, had some quarters in 2020 that were down versus 2019, you can still apply, but quickly, very, very quickly. And again, the official deadline is the 31st, but really get to your bank within the next week and a half, I think would be the best thing. So this is the American Rescue Plan. You've heard about $1.9 trillion, and this is all we get. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I think it's wonderful. It's laser focused on some of the hardest hit um, people. Uh, and certainly some of the hardest hit industries. 
it was a little bit of a bummer to see out of uh, 1.9 trillion dollars that small businesses are getting 50 billion 50 billion is still a good chunk of change though we have to remember that half of that is going to restaurants and bars because again they got seriously hit um they are bumping up the idle uh, with about 15 billion and their intention is to go around when they first came out deb and i were talking about that that whirlwind of craziness when this whole thing started about a year ago and they did the first uh, legislation in late march of 2020 and there was just so much going on and the idol came out and said hey 10 grand ten thousand dollar advance you don't have to pay back and they got overwhelmed and then they said, whoa, we're running out of money. <laughs> and they said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll go up to up to $10,000 and we'll do it $1,000 per employee. So a lot of people got two grand or so. Useful, but not 10. What they're doing is they're going around to those people that are, uh, they're starting with people that are in a low income area and they're making them whole, if you will, to the whole $10,000. The intention is basically anyone that applied, if they still have the money, and that's what this 15 billion is going to shore up, um, they'll go back around and do that for everybody, but they're going to start with folks in the lower income areas. So just know about that. And then I have not, I taught today, so I have not been able to check to see what finally happened with the latest bill. But as of yesterday, anyway, they've added 7.25 billion to the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program. So they have um, expanded it, but not extended it as far as I know. Okay. So we're still looking at that uh, March 31st thing. Um, good news, though, for sole proprietors, you used to base it on the very bottom line income, which, you know, is after all the deductions, you've been going to your accountant and saying, Mr. or Mrs. Accountant, make my taxable income as low as possible, get that bottom line as low as possible. And then we did the PPP and it was and your loan was based on your bottom line. We, <laughs> you know, uh, so what they're doing now is they're understanding that and they're doing it on um, gross income. So your direct cost minus I'm sorry, your revenues minus your direct cost should amount to a larger loan for a non-employer or a um, sole proprietor. Um, just the first round alone, okay? This thing worked. I mean, look at that. First round alone, 12,000 loans in Johnson County, uh, 1.4 billion, about a third of what the entire state got, 128,000 jobs. I mean, imagine that mortgages being paid, rent being paid, food on people's table because of this because of employers doing their homework and getting these things done, you small businesses getting these things done. And were they a pain in the butt? Of course, it's a bank loan. Uh, is it a pain in the butt to get it forgiven? Of course, it's an SBA bank loan. But y'all did the paperwork, you know, and you kept these people employed and you're continuing to do that. Um, almost $5 billion was injected into the state. And at the very bottom of the slide is uh, one of my clients and very forthright that they would have had to let people go if uh if they didn't get this money so it works it's a pain in the butt but it works the idle economic injury disaster loan um they've extended this through the end of this year okay this one is a loan all right i mean the the ppp is a loan that's designed to be forgiven as long as you spend it on the right stuff it's forgiven the idle is a loan except for that first up to ten thousand dollars or so uh it's a great loan 30-year term 3.75%. Again, gross profit. Sales minus direct costs gives you your gross profit for the year. They'll give you half of that. Their idea is let's pay the bills for companies for six months. This is cheap money at a time when we're not seeing a lot of capital. Okay. Uh, typically, our office helps people access about 14 to 15 million a year. Um, last year, we were, were well over 20 million because of the CARES Act stuff. I had two non CARES Act loans last year. All right. One was a chiropractor that started up and one was a cabinet maker that started up. Um, this is out of an office that generally does, like I said, 14, 15 million dollars in loan assistance for conventional loans. So capital ain't easy to access right now. And the idle makes makes that happen. Uh, what we're hoping is we see a lot more of these $10,000 advances. They call it an advance, but they're not asking for it to be repaid. Again, they're starting in low income areas. And they're circling back around to those people in low-income areas to make sure that they, um, they're made whole. And they've added $15 billion to the thing. So that's still going. All right. This one is the closest thing to a silver bullet that I can offer you right now. Um, last year, the ERTC, the Employee Retention Tax Credit, was not as good. 
it was a 50% of your labor credit. That's great. But it was an either or. If you did the PPP, you couldn't do the ERTC. Now you can do both. Okay. Uh, so if you have under 500 employees, and, and now we're looking at these quarters, Q1 and Q2 of this year, if you are still suffering, out there. Okay. And they mean a 20% drop or more versus the same quarters in 2019. So pre COVID, these two quarters versus Q1, Q2 of 2019, you can get a credit of up to, up to $7,000 per employee per quarter for these first two quarters of 2021, which can be amazing. There is a lot of confusion out there. And I think what our businesses are thinking is that this is um, a tax credit of 70% of their FICA contribution. Okay. Uh, and the reason they're thinking that is it's basically a credit to that withholding account. Okay. But it's a fully refundable tax credit. So if the amount that um, goes into that thing is more than you need to cover your FICA contribution, it's yours. All right. So it effectively means that you can get a, a check from the government and I uh, from the IRS uh, to pay for up to 70% of your labor and up to seven grand per employee. So this is the one where, like I said, it's 1.4 million to my to my uh, my client with 125 employees. It's over $500,000 to my client in uh, aviation. You can do this, even if you're doing the PPP. Um, if you if you know q2 you start to kick butt the credit goes away but if you're still suffering in q1 and q2 this is what you need to go to to your uh, your accountant your payroll provider and uh, see what they can get going and by the way you can even file form uh, irs 7200 7200 um and and get this money in advance you don't even have to wait until the end of the quarter so uh, begin filing for this uh, beginning of q2 which is coming up in three weeks Gives you the chance to go to your go to your uh, advisors. Uh, PUA, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. This is for you know gig workers and and whatnot, self employed. That's been extended through the 29th. Uh, you can apply through Kansas Department of Labor. God help you. Um, they were besieged by fraud. Gave away 600 million dollars to fraudsters. Um, but anyway, that's where you start with the um, with the PUA. And of course, you've also seen that in the latest bill, the American Rescue Plan, uh, they're talking about 300 bucks, I believe, through September 6th um, for unemployment insurance as well. And we're almost at the end of this stuff. We'll go into the money market and, and uh, management, I promise. Um, but this is a another little known jewel of the CARES Act. If you have a current SBA loan, they're making two months. It used to be three, they bumped it down to two, uh, automatic payments, full principal interest and fees. If you get a new loan between the beginning of February and the end of um, September, they'll give you three months automatically. Is that enough reason to go into debt? Absolutely not. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's like, that's crazy talk. I mean, that's like one of these things where a furniture store says you don't have to make any payments uh, for all of 2021. So spend five grand on a sofa. No. Uh, we're, not, we're not talking about that at all. But if you were going to expand anyway, if you're going to get a, uh, you know, you're like, wow, real estate's cheap right now. I want to buy my own place. I want to make use of this stuff, uh, uh, of some of the bargains that I'm seeing. And you want to do a 504 loan through the SBA for real estate, for example. Uh, a micro loan. I've got this. I am using this anywhere from a $10,000 startup to a $2.4 million acquisition. Um, and it's up to nine grand a month and it's absolutely automatic. So a little known, a little known jewel within the thing. And then locally, Johnson County got about $2 million to do some additional workforce training. And they are being very generous with this stuff. Um, if you've got under 100 employees, you're going to get some form of um, uh, recompense for training. If you're under 50 employees, it's 90 percent of the training. OK, uh, and Tim's on and Tim can can uh, Tim, are you our contact person for this? Or should we send them to Elisa? Uh, it's China. Ellen. Ellen Klickner is who they uh, and I can get that email address into the chat. OK, perfect. Yeah, we know Ellen very well. She was our, our program administrator for years. Uh, fantastic. And she will work really hard to get you this stuff. She understands it. But I mean, look at that. 
uh, under one to 50. I mean, that's 95% of businesses out there. Um, workforce partnership will pay for 90% of your training, but again, 2 million bucks goes fast. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't wait to take advantage of this thing. A um, couple of tips, just like in real estate, location, location, location. Oh my God, don't use two different programs to pay for the same thing. Okay. Some of y'all might have gotten, um, there were Overland Park grants for rent up to $5,000. You might've gotten a Johnson County grant for $10,000. There were about 1300 of them. And ECJC did an amazing job of doing that and getting that stuff out there. You might have gotten a spark grant from the state um, uh, that was actually CARES Act money. You might have taken a, an idle loan and or used the advance. You might have gotten the PPP in the first draw or the second draw, and that's all okay. But make sure you can tell the government, well, hey, look, I used the idle to pay the bills for six months. I used the PPP to pay for two and a half months of payroll last year. I used this year's PPP to pay for two and a half months of payroll for this year. I used the ERTC to pay for uh march april may of this year you know just be able to show different things that you use the money on they don't want to ever see two different programs paying for the same thing all right look this isn't enough money anyway so surely you can you can find things that you spent the money on but i just want you to be very aware of that because that is a big Oopsie, a big no, no, uh, keep receipts for life. I mean, <laughs> they're, uh, they're talking three to six years, but I mean, my God, uh, there has been some fraud. People have bought Lamborghinis and stuff with PPP money. Uh, the idol had some fraud unemployment, as you saw, had some fraud. They fixed the tax deduction thing of all this, uh, with the December 27 bill cares act money was always supposed to be tax free. Now, the IRS isn't any fun, right? The IRS went in there and said, whoa, whoa, why should we let a business deduct something that we paid for? All right. It's understandable. But um, Congress was like, no, 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 no. The idea from this was that it was completely tax free, not allowing a business to take the deduction for something that was care paid for by CARES Act money, essentially got rid of that tax free status for that. They fixed that. So the money's tax free. It's not income. And you can still deduct the stuff that it's paid for, which is pretty cool. So again, um, you know, work with your banker, work with whoever does your payroll, work with your accountant. I realize they're busy as I'll get out right now with taxes. Um, but uh, work with those folks. Uh, work with Ellen for the um, workforce development. Get your records in order because ECJC, they did the God's work and they really suffered. Out of 1,300 grants, I remember early on when they had processed about 1,000 of them. 300 of those applications were garbage. I mean, they, they, they got business owners that couldn't show them that they had a revenue reduction, never mind a bottom line or a P&L or an income statement. These 300 businesses couldn't show them that their overall sales were down. Their records were so bad. Um, you're going to need some records for these things. You know, you've for the ERTC, you got to show that things are down 20 percent for the PPP, show that 25 percent. Um, for the uh, the loan amount, you need 941 records to show your payroll amount. So you got to have your, pay, your paperwork in order. I don't know how a business functions for a year without knowing what their sales are, <laughs> you know? uh, but it happens. All right. So finally, thank you for allowing me to kind of get everyone up to speed on that. Let's talk money management. And I was talking with uh, Deb before and Jack Harwell is one of my colleagues along with Stephanie Willis. I've had Jack tested and he clocks in at 2.5 times smarter than me, which really annoys me because that's the only thing I got going. It ain't looks. Um, and, uh, and this dude is a lot smarter and he talks about the most important number in business. So we'll talk about that. We'll discuss accounts receivable, cash flow, and properly managing debt. Um, so his most important number is gross profit margin. All right. And again, you've heard me mention this already a couple of times. It is your revenue, your sales minus your direct costs gives you your gross profit and you use that to pay for everything else. Okay. And that, that pays the bills that pays you. Um, it's not the same, it's the same concept, but different math as markup, 50% margins, hundred percent markup in the rest restaurant industry. It's about, if you're lucky, it's 40%, 60 cents of every dollar goes to pay for the food ingredients and goes to pay for the labor, which leaves 40 cents in a well-run restaurant to pay for everything else. So 40 cents of every dollar is all they get to pay for the owner, the advertising, the rent, the insurance, all that stuff, right? Grocery industry. It's 
their cost of goods is 78 cents of every dollar, leaves them 22 cents to pay for everything else. So that's one of the reasons why Kansas lost 40 rural groceries in the last decade, which can be a killer for a, uh, a rural community. But there is no, I like to think of this as a lever, there is no stronger lever that you can pull on your business to uh, to affect change. And then that, that might be buying better. A lot of times, I got to be honest with you, it's raising prices. We see people that do not raise prices for years and really get killed. Um, I've been working with people this time of year. This happens all the time. People go to their accountant and the, the accountant does their taxes and says, good God, Mary, you lost 12 grand last year. And this is the first Mary knew about it because Mary's books aren't that great, right? She knew she was broke, but she didn't know it was that bad. Um, so I'm working with, we're confidential, so I can't say much about this person, but it's a, a person that provides a professional service. She had to go to school for this. She had to get certifications for this. She has special training. She has special um, uh, insurance and everything, right? She's providing a high-end professional service that she's charging $55 an hour for. Now, you can't get anything done for $55 an hour, first of all, okay? Uh, a massage costs you more than $55 an hour. Um, so she's charging $55 an hour, and she's paying her people $25 an hour, okay? So, yeah, all right. Sounds like she's making 30 bucks. However, in her industry, as in many industries, she can bill out for about two-thirds of her time. So effectively, because, I mean, because her employees are driving, they're doing paperwork, they're taking a break, um, formal or informal. They're sick. They're caring for somebody with, uh, that, in their family that got sick or something. So two-thirds of the time is all she can bill for. So effectively, it's not 55. It's two-thirds of that. It's 37. Okay? And then those of you that are employers know that if you are paying somebody 25, they don't cost you 25. They're costing you closer to 30. Right? So now you can see her getting squeezed. It's not 55 and 25. It's 37 and 30 leaving her that slim $7 per hour. And so this poor person, this client of mine, worked all last year um, and lost $1,300. And it's down to pricing. So, I mean, I'm working with her to uh, obviously find new customers. If she can't move the needle on the prices that they're paying, then we're finding new ones. Uh, it's got to happen. She's got to change that gross profit margin. And it's, it, I see this over and over and over again. I had to write to a client the other day selling used goods, which he should be paying somewhere between 25 and 40 cents of every dollar. But after he discounts stuff and everything, he ends up paying 75 cents of every dollar. He has an unsustainable business at that level. Uh, and that's what I had to tell him. This number has to be watched, okay? And that's why Jack calls it the most important number in business. In terms of managing the books you've got three financial statements the business owners home right in on the income statement of, or the PL, profit and loss whatever you want to call it they want to know what are my sales and do i make any money okay banks you go to a bank they are laser focused on the balance sheet they're looking at the health of your business you know and seeing uh, where you are with regard to debt versus versus assets versus money very much like when you go to the doctor and they take your blood pressure and your temperature to see how you're doing. Uh, that's what the banks are doing. But businesses live and die by a little known uh, financial statement, the cash flow statement. And let me tell you, I mean, I'm not making this up. I mean, this is from SCORE, the um, used to be called the Service Corps of Retired Executives. And, and by the way, <laughs> an amazing, an amazing um, organization. Thousands of volunteer free mentors all over the country. So, I mean, you know, Jack, Stephanie, and I, we know our stuff, but I, I guarantee you, I haven't worked in your businesses. These are people that are working or have worked in your industry that just want to give back of their time. So, score is fabulous, fantastic. But um, look at that quote on the bottom. I wish they had rephrased it a little bit. They don't mean that 82% of businesses fail. Okay. It's better than that. Um, but what they're saying is of the businesses that fail, overwhelming majority, 82% fail due to cash flow. They might have been profitable. But the money didn't come in when they needed it. You know, uh, it was out in accounts receivable. It's it's tied up in inventory. Cash flow is a huge killer of a business. And there are, it's called a cash killer. I mean, there are several of them. Um, accounts receivable, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail, is huge. If you're waiting to get paid, that's killing cash and going to kill cash flow. 
a seasonal business, a marina, a ski slope, um, a retail store that does 40% of their business in November and December, for example, a lot of uh, inventory on the shelves, a lot of capital equipment, a, a construction company that's got a $100,000 bulldozer that's not being in use and not doing billable hours, that's the same as an employee sitting on their butt, right? You'd fire that employee or you'd find something for them to do. And uh, uh, we've got to do that with a bulldozer as well. Uh, so inventory or capital equipment. And then really counterintuitively, just really rapid growth. You know, if you've got a, a business model and, and you, uh, you've you stumbled on something fan flipping tastic and you want to just replicate that 20 times over, uh, you've got a cash flow crunch. Or the example that we use in our startup class, you, you've got a janitorial business, fantastic. And you win a $2 million contract to do janitorial services or landscaping services for Fort Leavenworth. Awesome. And we are popping champagne corks and we're happy for you, right? That $2 million contract over a year, you probably need a million three or a million five in working capital. You need a line of credit with your bank. You need a loan. It's just math, you know, because you're going to have to hire people. You're going to have to bring them in, um, get them uniforms, get them tools, probably buy some vans so you can get them onto the fort. Uh, landscaping, you're going to need the mowers and, and the commercial mowers aren't cheap. You've got to do the job. You've got to invoice for the job. You've got to wait for the government to pay for the job, you know, and that can take usually five weeks or so if every, if all the paperwork is right. So even explosive, explosive growth can become a, uh, a cash killer. It's somewhat counterintuitive. But the biggest one, the most common one that we see out there is accounts receivable. If, if cash is king, then AR is paupers, peasants, whatever you want, problems, whatever P word you want to use. Um, we've got clients that at the very start of uh, the slowdown started running credit on their customers to see what was going on. Or you can incentivize people, give them terms, 210 net 30. They get a 2% discount if they pay within 10 days. They pay the whole thing within 30 or after that it's uh, annualized 18% or so. You're getting, you're charging interest for the uh, for the money after that or giving them a discount if they pay quickly. Um, invoicing electronically instead of uh, sending it in the mail can speed things up. You can get some training. I mean, here's a, uh, and, and don't worry, I included this link in the follow-up. Uh, this was a great little two minute, 41 second uh, video training you how to deal with customers with respect, but still get paid, you know, just get some help on this sometimes. Um, the bills that arrive earlier in the month, you know how it is. This is the 10th. John's out of money. <laughs> I got $18 left in my spending account for just fun money. You know what I mean? For the month, I, I am, uh, I have more money in college. Uh, but uh, the, the, if you can get the bill to your customers earlier in the month, you got a better chance of getting paid. If you have to, then you factor it. You sell your accounts receivable to somebody at a discount. Uh, the problem with that is they own your AR, and I hope they don't own your client relationship because they could do something to um, to to, uh, to ruin that relationship so you don't have them anymore. Um, if you are finding yourself that you're financing people, then, then kind of adopt the General Motors auto credit thing. Work with a uh, third-party credit company to provide credit to your com uh, to customers. So if people can't afford to um, redo their roof or redo their gutters or something like that, because they don't have 10 or 15 grand for a roof or 20 in the bank right now, and very few people do, then uh, the money, either they're not going to make the sale, you're, you're not going to be able to sell it, or they're going to borrow it from you. <laughs> and you're going to send them a bill and they're going to be slow paying it. So, or putting on a, on, a, on a visa card, which is awful. I mean, that's 18 to 24%. So can you work with a third party uh, credit company to get financing for them and give them a break from that 18 to 24 percent? And then the very last thing on here is, you know, you go get a line of credit, but you're borrowing money to lend it out. So, I mean, that's last for a reason. That's why we uh, we don't we don't want that one. Um, banks are. Are old fashioned. Um, and they'll admit that uh, an honest banker will admit that. But my God, they're the cheapest money out there. You know what I mean? Play by their rules. Um, do your have your financial statements. If, if they want to see a business plan, is a business plan old fashioned? Yep. -er, you know, but the bank wants to understand that that you understand the business, that the first words out of your mouth, if they fund your proposal for an expansion are let's go and not now what, you know, um, so 
play by their rules, even if they, they, they seem old fashioned, because they are incredibly cheap money. You know, I mean, this was uh, as of about a month ago or so. They haven't changed uh, much. They can offer you some latitude. They can go to interest only for a while if it's an SBA loan. Again, the SBA is making a couple of months payments uh, for you. Work with your bank to make sure that the terms of your loans are tied to the asset life. Sometimes we see things are out of whack there. And debt is not failure, okay? There is a mathematical formula out there called a sustainable growth rate. And it basically says, all right, Mary, given what you've told me about how much you reinvest and a couple of other numbers of your business, this is what you could grow per year outside of any other money coming in, all right? And it might be 1.5%, 2% a year. That's all you can grow organically. Um, If you want to double year over year, that's probably going to require some capital. That capital is coming from your savings. That capital is coming from your retirement savings, home equity loan, or commercial loan from a bank. But again, it is not a failure. It's math. You know, I, I have ve- I'm debt averse, and I have debt averse clients. But it, um, you, you're going to need money to grow your business. Uh, but again, banks are cheap. There's a reason why I've crossed off cabbage here. I hope you never have to fall back on somebody like this. Cabbage is hip and fast. And if it's a Thursday and you can't make Friday's payroll, that's who you turn to. The interest rate is 99%. Okay. Count the vowels in my last name. I have cousins that can do low doc loans to you for better than 99%. All right. Do not fall into this. This is like paycheck, uh, uh, payday lending kind of thing. Cash net USA, man, 238% annualized interest. All right. This is a, a shovel to dig a bigger hole for you. And, um, and I hope this is so much better. (laughs) Three and a quarter is so much better than 99. You're not bouncing back from this. So, you know, be working with people, watching your cash flow, working with your accountant. Um, we're not going to do your books, but we're happy to do the analysis of this stuff. And I do that over and over again to show you where you can, where you can make things better in your business. All right. Let's get on to the fun stuff, the marketing. All right. This was a recent post um, by uh, Facebook, looks like, uh, from HubSpot, one of my favorite marketing companies out there. And it was one of their marketing pros. And she said, 99% of my job is saying, oh, my God, there's no silver bullets. You got to test. Yes, this is a long game. All right. One ad, one marketing touch does nothing. You got to have six to maybe nine contacts with a customer before they can draw the, the dots between what you offer and what they need. Uh, I mean, not always, you know, if it's a warm day in July or August and you're driving past the neighbor's kids and they're selling lemonade, you don't need to get seven emails from them to decide that you're thirsty and you want to give them two bucks, right? But for most of our things, most of the businesses that we do, professional services, services, products, they're going to need to see your name or hear about you or from you six, seven, eight, nine times. It is definitely a long game of consistency. So one of the things I want to send you, we'll talk about a few of the trends, but one of the things I want to send you is a, uh, another company I like, Hootsuite, uh, and they put out a 2021 social trends. And again, I'm going to send you the link. Don't worry, but we're just going to peg on a couple of them. Um, They're not, customers are not able to go to your store right now. They're not able to be visiting with you in your office and they're missing that experience. You're going to have to figure out some way to bring them that experience Uh, For the most part, it's going to be video, you know, but all of you are are sitting at your desk with a video camera for crying out loud. You got a tablet, you got a phone, you got a video camera and a short little video about something helpful, something interesting, something useful, showcasing one of your staff, showcasing one of your customers, um, sharing of your expertise, something, just get it out there so that they can experience what they, what they can't see or feel or uh, in person anymore. Um, back when I used to be able to remember travel, um, this was a, a Bialetta store in Italy and, uh, they're selling coffee and they're selling coffee equipment. And I went in there and I'm like, something's wrong. And what I realized was there was no smell of coffee in this place. And I'm like, if I'm trying to move a $40 coffee machine or actually about 50, cause it's 40 euros, $50 coffee machine up to several thousand dollars. I sure as heck want the smell of coffee in that place, you know, they, they, they really missed the boat. And that's what we're doing now online. You've got to figure out some way to convey the aroma baby of your business, um, through, uh, through the web, 
and, and generally through video. You're going to have to share with people that you're keeping them safe. Um, about almost two thirds of shoppers would stop shopping at a retailer that's not keeping their safety uh, paramount. All right. So that's one of the things that you you need to convey to people to make sure they understand that uh, that you're keeping them safe right now. Um, one of the other trends is to sort of step back and listen and take the temperature of social media. OK, uh, so the example up right, this was just, I think, this week, I think it was Monday. Burger King decided to celebrate Women's History Month with a really badly phrased tweet. Um, I'm sure the way they meant that was women rule and women are great chefs and women can, you know, can, can do anything, but to have said through social women belong in the kitchen, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to work. You've got to sort of take the temperature of things. Be very careful. People can't hear your tone um, in social media posts. They can't hear the, the, uh, what words you accent. Um, so I liken it to a cocktail party. You don't walk up to someone in a cocktail party a couple of people that are talking and just break right into the conversation, stand back, listen a little bit, figure out what they're talking about. When it comes to a time when you can interject something that's helpful, useful, educational, informative, fun, great, do that. But, you know, be careful out there. Just be slow, kind of take the temperature of what's going on. One of the other trends that they, that they mention is we see a lot of people, um, wooing the millennials and gen z do not forget about baby boomers all right uh because i'm one first of all so that hurts but uh i mean baby boomers have the cash there is 10 trillion dollars worth of baby boomer businesses that are going to be transferring over the next five to ten years all right uh, there's not enough capital out there to buy those businesses which is why we're working very hard jack harwell you've heard me mention him is our succession planning person and exit planning um, but boomers, it's still a thing, baby. Uh, I mean, uh, it is a huge block and they got the cash. So do not, um, do not stop paying attention to those folks. This one's a little tough for a small business. What they're trying to get at here is that if someone comments on social or follows you, you've got to kind of put on your big boy marketing pants and treat that the same way as you would if someone called you and you would enter that call into a CRM, a customer relationship management uh, program, right? For me, my ask of you is to have a CRM, right? <laughs> to use a customer relationship management uh, program, to keep track of customers, to create a series of automated emails so that when you get a brand new customer, they get a welcome email. And a week later, they get an email with your top 10 tips and they get a series of those things to start chipping away at those six, seven, eight, nine contacts right at once and, and have it set up automated to, to offer these things going forward. So, and, and you don't have to spend a lot. Zoho, I think, Z-O-H-O -O, still has a free CRM. Um, and so you don't have to spend a lot of money on these things. I promise you. Um, and then the last thing that Hootsuite pointed out, and this is uh, primarily, I think, with the, the younger, um, the younger uh, customers out there, but I think with everybody, it, it holds true. They don't want to see just a business. They want to see that you're trying to build a better world somehow. Um, and uh, whether that's the way that you give back or, or the mission of your business or whatever, you need to be transparent about that. They're not, customers are not just plunking their money down for stuff as much anymore. Uh, they're looking for experience and they're looking for a partner in commerce that's uh, really trying to do some good out there. So do try to keep that in mind. Um, in terms of people, people are in survival mode and I, I, I failed to find the, the source of my statistic, okay? But recently I read a, an article where they sampled 5,000 people in America uh, so 5,000 is a pretty good sample size. Fully 43% of those people were psychologically in survival mode. I don't mean they're out there with a, a stick trying to spear a rabbit for dinner. What I mean is they can't think ahead. They know what they're going to eat tonight for dinner. They might be able to go shopping this week for food on the table. Do not ask them about April. Do not ask them about this summer or fall or this coming holiday season, they can't 
think ahead, they're psychologically in survival mode. You've got to understand that. So as a, as a, a business owner, as an employer, your, your employees are going through this. 43% of your employees are going through this, all right? They got stuff on their minds. It's hard to be moving forward with goals in business when you are worried about your sick mom kind of thing, you know? Um, and so supporting their mental health is going to be a bigger, bigger thing. Whether you do that very informally, and again, I'm going to send you this link, uh, 10 ways to improve mental health. I mean, look, it's, it's nothing you're going to spend money on. You're, you're having the conversation. You're including everybody. If they need some time off, uh, Jessica Johnson is our director. And, and uh, a while back, um, one of the very first lovely, lovely afternoons that we had, um, she said, look, everybody, you've been working longer than we pay you. Um, shut your computer off. I don't want to see you on your computer at four o'clock. Go take a walk. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything high, high end. The college is fabulous. I mean, I can avail myself of a EAP a employee assistance program and have five meetings with a therapist uh, if I need one. And, and, uh, and I've availed myself of them, as a matter of fact, before. Um, but um, it doesn't have to be anything expensive or, or formal. Uh, just understand that that's going on. Um, a huge trend. The prior recession hit men. This recession is hitting women uh, predominantly. And uh, so there is a huge gender wage gap going on out there. And then coupled with that is we're seeing this, oh my gosh, when we were working with the counties to figure out how they could, could and should spend their uh, CARES Act money, daycare was at the top of the charts. I mean, if you didn't have daycare services, you can't go to work. If you, don't, if you can't go to work, you can't put food on the table. Uh, if you don't go to work, you can't afford the daycare. Oh my gosh, it was like this pivotal keystone out there. And it's bloody expensive, you know? Um, and so some of my, some of my really forward thinking clients are actually trying to figure out how to do their own daycare facility for their employees, uh, which is pretty cool. But whether it's just a matter of this is how you are, you're incorporating this in your recruiting, for example, uh, so that you understand that and you, and you pay a fair wage, um, just be aware of this trend because again, uh, both genders didn't uh, suffer equally. You're going to see some new laws and regulations about how you surveil and manage your employees for sure. So be be watching that uh, because now that we are dispersed geographically, um, there are some issues with how much you can kind of uh, keep tabs on employees. So be watching that. And, and if you, um, I would advise you maybe work with SHRM, uh, Society of Human Resource Managers, uh, someone from those folks to kind of keep you, keep you apprised of that or follow them on uh on linkedin or whatever um and just like we are geographically dispersed the younger workers are temporarily dispersed they uh, do not really want to be doing stuff eight to five nine to five they are like look boss if i can get my stuff done at 2 a.m that's when i'm sharpest and that's when it's quiet what do you care i'm getting the work done and we're gonna have to uh, realize as managers as employers that a good chunk of our employees are going to really need uh, flexible work hours. So we're being dispersed geographically and in terms of time. That's going to be a, a trend moving forward. It ain't going back. Um, so this is, again, something we're going to send you. This is from SHRM, Society of Human Resource Managers. I was married to one of these for a while. Let me tell you, I really miss the annual performance reviews and the performance improvement plan that I was putting on a couple of times. That, that, those were a hoot. <laughs> but uh, uh, some tips for managing remote employees is one of the um, one of the links I'm, that we're going to send you. I'm going to send that to Deb and Kelsey uh, and Stony later on. And then let me tell you, just for your own time management, if you're not making use of the gig gig economy, you are leaving some headache relief on the table. Okay, Fiverr with two R's, um, Upwork, for example, these are freelance portals, if you will. What did I use it today for? Um, ah, my, uh, person in my marketing class this morning was like, man, I really want to do an e-newsletter, but I don't even know where to start. We went into Fiverr, typed in, um, uh, newsletters, uh, obviously hundreds of people, but there was someone that popped to the top of the charts with nearly 1000 five-star reviews. Um, I mean, so you've got just like you use Yelp to choose a restaurant, perhaps, um, this is Yelp for professionals, if you will. And you can, you can take a lot off your plate. I've had people use this to figure out tax software, uh, graphic design, patent drawings, 
anything that you're not good at, anything that your time is better spent doing what you do than trying to figure this stuff out. You know, I'm trying to figure out Google tags for downloads on our website. I'm not good at it. The college is spending money on me to help clients. This is something that I should be outsourcing to someone that's like, oh, Google tags. Yeah, I know that and can just do that, that task. So when you get in this thing, you're going to be like a kid in a candy store. I promise you. I've seen this over and over again with my clients. It's always tasks that you don't like, you're not good at, and you can outsource for less than we can charge for your time. Um, so please do make use of that. And then finally, you've heard me mention my boss, my director, uh, my El Capo, uh, Jess, uh, Jessica Johnson, and I asked her for some recommendations because she is a lifelong learner. And by the way, that is a big success factor, um, whether it's in terms of uh, employability or business ownership. So she gave you her suggestions for some podcasts that she likes. John Maxwell is in there. Harvard Business Review is in there. And also some books. Um, and let's see, somebody, oh yeah, one, uh, I did this uh, a few weeks back. Somebody loved Radical Candor by uh, Kim Scott, for example. If you're a military type, then you might, might, you might like Jim Mattis and Call Sign, call sign Chaos. I got to talk slower. But anyway, these are just a few, a few sources for ideas um, so that you can keep on, keep on honing your saw, basically. Keep on getting sharp. So looking ahead, remember, if you were going to go into debt anyway, <laughs> uh, then please do make use of, uh, well, all you got to do is get an SBA back loan. It's automatic. And you'll get three months of payments uh, for any loan closed between now and the end of September. They're granddaddy 7A, real estate loans, even micro loans. They've upped the guarantee to 90%. So you got Uncle Sam guaranteeing 90 cents of every dollar. Uh, so it's like Uncle Sam is your co-signer. Um, and they've, 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 waive the fees. I mean, generally, if you did an SBA loan, you ponied up two or 3% right off the get go to pay for the businesses that went belly up. Uh, they waive that. And remember, you can do the paycheck protection program if you have employees. Uh, well, even if you don't, and the employee retention tax credit, that one is if you do have employees, you can do both. And please work with your accountants and payroll providers for those. Whew. Y'all made it through about 45 slides, uh, and, and uh, I wish I were paid by the word, let me tell you. But this is me. This is my um, email, direct email. That is our brand spanking new website. We'd love for you to visit. And I am all yours for questions, answers, complaints. <laughs>